This experiment will show you how they brought blood cells back to life using just sound. I'm telling you, this is very real. Moreover, you'll see how, after putting sand on a sarcophagus, hieroglyphs started to appear as if they have their own frequency. What you're about to witness is so powerful, you'll want to start incorporating it into your life immediately. Keep watching all the way through. This video is loaded with mind-blowing experiments that are sure to astonish you. Let's begin. My name is John Stuart Reed, and I'm an acoustic physics researcher. Pythagoras said that music could be used in place of medicine. It got my attention and I thought there must be some experiments that could be conducted where we can carefully measure the response of music to some sort of healing situation. The first experiment that I conceived of was using blood. You take a vial of blood and you place it into an incubator with a small loudspeaker in the incubator that's feeding music to that blood. At the same time that that's happening, we have another vial of the same blood. We have a Faraday cage, which is electromagnetically screened, but it's also a very, very quiet environment. So that blood is not receiving any music, it's just receiving quiet. We go through a protocol that first dilutes the blood by a certain ratio with a buffer solution, and then we extract a small amount of that mixed blood. When we put that blood into the cell counter, it will tell us how many cells are actually live and what the term is viable. The cells in the Faraday cage have not fared very well at all. Mostly dead. But if the cells are dead, that means that the cells from the tube that got exposed to my voice, they'll be dead too. I mean, it's the same blood. <laughs> I hope you can see this. Dilute the sample. More cells alive than the cell counter can count. That's a huge difference between the music and the quiet. Is, is, is that true? true? Well, look. <laughs> this is amazing. So I think we should repeat and see if we get the same result. Another above the range that it can count, cells that are transiting towards being dead have been actually re-enlivened to the extent that so many of them are now alive. Well, just it's really it. wonderful. <laughs> An amazing result. Wow. What we've just seen is absolutely amazing. It's like a real-life example of what's said in the Bible. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18.21 the experiment we saw proves this in a big way. It was Anders Holti, known for his unique, kind of otherworldly music, whose voice re-enlivened the cells. That's mind-blowing. Of course, the point of this experiment is to showcase the power of harmonious sounds. It's not just about Anders Holte's unique ability, it's a bigger picture about good frequencies and their importance. This experiment helps us understand how vital these harmonious frequencies are. And it's not just any sound that has the power to re-enliven cells, but those that are in harmony, in tune with nature, and beneficial to our well-being. Credit for this goes to Dr. John Stuart Reed and the documentary The One Field, a film by Sipi Raz. Without this film, we might never have known about this incredible experiment. I really encourage you to watch the entire film because it's an eye-opener. You'll find links in the description. Think about it. If Anders Holte's voice, along with such beautiful and harmonious sounds, can wake up cells that were almost dead, it really makes you wonder about the music we listen to every day. Some of it is deliberately off-tune or tuned to harmful frequencies. 
Now, let's take a look at another one of Dr. John Stuart Reed's incredible discoveries. This time from his work in the pyramids of Egypt. Imagine this, Dr. Reed, in a setting as ancient and mysterious as the pyramids, places sand on a sarcophagus. As he conducts his experiment with sound vibrations, something absolutely phenomenal happens. Hieroglyphs begin to emerge. It's as if the sand, dancing to the tune of the vibrations, starts to unveil secrets that have been hidden for thousands of years. It all started back at the Great Pyramid in 1997. Three weeks before I was due to go out to Egypt, I severely injured my lower back. I thought I would have to cancel the whole mission, but somehow I managed to get into the pyramid. Other people carried the equipment. The experiment that was designed was to make visible the resonances in the sarcophagus. I set up the experiment, then I stretched PVC membrane across the open top of the sarcophagus. Then I sprinkled sand on the membrane. And when we switched on the sound, this is just pure tones, electronically created tones. A whole range of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs started to appear in the sand. First one was the hieroglyph for backbone or spinal column. It was writhing about like a snake. Antiquities inspector, he was like, how you do that? How you do that? We saw lots and lots of different hieroglyphs coming out on this membrane. But what was so extraordinary was within 20 minutes of making sound, all the pain in my back left me and never did come back. It's an extraordinary moment in my life that changed my life forever. The remarkable healing Dr. John Stuart Reed experienced in the Great Pyramid strongly underscores the therapeutic potential of sound. His sudden relief from chronic back pain serves as a compelling testament to how sound frequencies can directly and significantly impact our physical health. This breakthrough opens thrilling new research possibilities in sound therapy and holistic healing, suggesting that sound is not just an abstract concept, but a practical tool for addressing physical health issues. This leads us to revisit the role of sound in ancient architecture. The Great Pyramid, renowned for its precision in both architecture and astronomy, may also have been intentionally designed with an intricate understanding of acoustics. Could it be that this iconic structure was more than a tomb or monument? Perhaps it served as an advanced resonant chamber for healing purposes, or other functions that we're yet to fully comprehend. The emergence of hieroglyphs in response to sound vibrations in Dr. Reed's experiment hints that the ancient Egyptians might have encoded a sophisticated understanding of sound's effects in their writing and architecture. This revelation could radically transform our understanding of ancient civilizations, suggesting they had a profound grasp of the physical and metaphysical aspects of sound. But if music and sound hold such power that they can reanimate blood cells, as seen in the previous experiment, or heal Dr. Reed's back permanently, it raises a critical question. What effect does the music we listen to, the music that's promoted everywhere, have on us? We've all seen how music can have darker, even demonic aspects. If sound can influence cells in our brain, particularly our subconscious, then the impact of our daily sonic environment becomes a matter of significant importance. Here's a clip of Michael Jackson discussing the hypnotic power of music, underscoring how deeply and subtly it can affect us. Singers, when they sing songs, it's like a mantra. When you repeat a chorus over and over and over, so when a kid hears a song, and he starts singing that chorus over and over and over. Then you start to hear it in the alpha state to the subconscious mind. So you start to become the song or become what you're saying. In the Bible, it speaks that there's life and death and power in the tongue. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. Be careful with the things you consistently talk about because you're inviting that energy and vibration into mm -hmm. your life. After hearing Michael Jackson talk about how music can transform our subconscious, much like a mantra, and Tyrese Gibson referencing the biblical verse, death and life are in the power of the tongue, were led to a crucial aspect of music, its tuning. It's widely discussed that the standard tuning frequency for music has been shifted from its original tone, a change attributed to decisions made by entities like the Rockefeller Foundation. This shift in frequency may seem minor, but its implications are profound. 